Okay, are we ready? Okay, so Hashim wants to discuss the topic. Okay, so Hashim wants to discuss the topic. Um, does the Bible teach that Jesus is God? It absolutely does. If you look into the sayings of Christ, the sayings that a mere prophet cannot say. For example, John chapter 8, 58, he says, Before Abraham was, I am. And he's absolutely referring back to Exodus 3 14, where God says to Moses, Tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. Or the Greek Septuagint says, uh, Tell, tell uh, Pharaoh, I am. Uh, I am he who is, or I am the one who is being, essentially, depending on how you can translate that from the Greek Septuagint into English. Uh, Christ also does this in Revelation 1.17. He says, I am the first and I am the last, which is a title of uh, Allah in the Islamic theology also, the first and last. So this is absolutely a title of God that he refers to himself. Uh, this is actually from Isaiah 44 verse 6, because in Isaiah 44 verse 6, God says to Isaiah, I am the first and I am the last. So for Christ to use this saying, if he wasn't God, if he was just a prophet, would be blasphemy. He would be making himself equal with God. And in John chapter 8, we actually see this. The Jews accuse Jesus of making himself equal with God. And in verse 59, they actually pick up stones to try and stone him to death for what they consider blasphemy. So I'll let you pick up. Yeah, I would rather, I would prefer we have one point at a time. Because what happens Choose otherwise... Choose one. Yeah, what happens otherwise is like we don't have much time or it'll be quite long for me to respond to you for the four points that you made. So choose one. You want to start with uh, Exodus 3.14? Whichever you like. Okay, so... Exodus 3.14, but also John 8 as a whole. Yeah, of course. Okay. So not, not just 58. Yeah. John 8.58 and Exodus 3.14. If they were equal, let's look at the Greek translation. Like you said, let's look at the Septuagint. Because the Septuagint says, Ego emi ho on. It doesn't just stop at Ego emi. Because the... The predicate there is quite important, the whole on, and this is not mentioned in uh, John 8.58. So I don't know why somebody would actually use John 8.58 to refer, refer to Exodus 3.14, when in Exodus 3.14, the one I, the one being is the important bit which is left out in John 8.58. So maybe you want to ref uh, refute that point I made? Okay. So this is the Greek Septuagint, as Hashim uh, referred to. In, sorry, yeah. This is the Greek Septuagint that Hashim referred to. And in uh, verse 14, is actually translated from the Greek Septuagint into English in these words. Then God says to Moses, I am the existing one. So when Jesus Christ says in John 8, 58, before Abraham was, I am, the Jews absolutely understood that. That's to be a claim to, divi to divinity. Because in verse 59, if ultimately Hashim's argument is that Jesus wasn't claiming to be God here, then why in verse 50, uh, 59 did they take that saying as blasphemy? Because in verse 59, they took up stones to throw at him, so they tried to stone him to death for what they considered blasphemy. So if he wasn't claiming to be God, why the, why the harsh punishment? Okay, so just because the Jewish people say that it's blasphemy or they want to stone him, that doesn't prove anything because that is their perception that is their view. In fact, the Jewish people, they reject Jesus as the Messiah with all the uh, prophecies about the Messiah in the Old Testament. So it doesn't mean anything just because the reaction of the Jewish people means nothing as far as what I'm saying is look at the Exodus 3.14 and I'll read the English from the Exodus 3.14 uh, mentioned in the Septuagint. So it says, and God said to Moses, I am, yes, ego emi, the one being, ho on. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the one being again, ho on, has sent me to you. Jesus did not say any of that about the one being. So you see, the predicate is missing when they translate it in English, or maybe this is not what Jesus wanted to say. Now, when the Jewish people wanted to stone him, they also wanted to stone him in John 10, 30, when he says, I and the Father are one. Yes, but we know clearly that Jesus did not mean that he and the Father are one in essence, because otherwise he wouldn't defend otherwise, himself. In John 10, 34, where he points that you are called gods. This is referring to Psalm 82, 6. Yes, you are ref referred to as God, I'm paraphrasing here. Yes, and all I said is I am the son of God. So you see, he's actually not making the claim that he's God. If Jesus was God, then do you really think that Jesus would worship a God? Okay, so he's referred to uh, Exodus 3.14, John 8.58. He hasn't actually explained why the Jews wanted to stone him to death after he immediately said, I am, because the Jews understood blasphemy. If you read earlier on in John chapter 8, he then says, if you do not believe that I am he, 
you will die in your sins. So when he says, if you do not believe I am he, he's absolutely referring back to the I am statement of Exodus 3.14, earlier in John, and also in John 8.58. There's no way around that. He absolutely is doing that. But he just touched on uh, John chapter 10, saying, you know, uh, ye are gods, etc. He's right. That is referring to Psalm 82. But let's read this in context. Let's read the whole passage and not just one verse. He, all due respect, he arbitrarily picks and chooses. Let's start in verse 31. Jesus answered them, and bear in mind, Hashim using this argument, he can't actually believe Christ even uttered these words as a Muslim, because if Christ uttered these words, then that means that he would be committing shirk, and he cannot believe as a good Muslim prophet he said these words. So let's start in verse 31. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Key word there, Father. The Quran says Allah is not the Father of Christ. I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. Now what prophet can grant someone eternal life? This is not a saying from a mere prophet. This is a divine claim. I give them eternal life. Okay. One, no, one, I'm going to finish. Okay. okay. Oh, just down today, yeah. Oh, yeah uh, and they shall never perish. Neither uh, shall anyone snatch them out of my hands. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hands. I and my father are one. Now this is another divine title. If Jesus says I am one and he's just a prophet, what prophet can claim to be one with God? Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Now why would they pick up stones to stone him if he was just a good Muslim prophet claiming monotheism in the Islamic sense? Jesus answered them, many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of these do you stone me? Then the Jews, and let's bear this in mind, Hashim wants you to believe his interpretation, we should believe the interpretation that was conceived of at this very saying. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you being a man, make yourself God. They understood Christ was claiming to be God, because they said, You being a man, make yourself God. They tried to stone him for blasphemy. Let's continue. Uh, Jesus answered and said to them, it is, it is written in your law, is it not written in your law? I said you are gods, and the, the, uh, the context here is they are representatives of, they are representatives of God. For example, uh, God to Moses in Exodus, I will make you God to Pharaoh. Does this mean Moses is now divine? No, it means he is a representative of God before his people. So these people who had the scripture given to them were representatives of God to his people. And the scripture cannot be broken. And do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent in the world, you are blaspheming because he said, I am the Son of God. So clearly Jesus is saying, I am the Son of God. So the point here, Hashim, is not that you are also gods. He's saying, if it's right for you guys to be called gods as representatives of God, is it not more fitting for me, the actual Son of God, to be called the Son of God, as he says here? Okay. So you see at the end there, he didn't say I'm God. He said, I'm the Son of God. Now, if the Christians <laughs> insist that Jesus was God, why is Jesus telling them as a clarification to that blasphemy yes sorry if you don't mind is it sorry, okay to stand a meter apart because you know why <laughs> okay so if jesus was indeed god and that is what he was actually uh, um, blamed for you see they actually were accusing him that you being a mere man are claiming to be god then why did jesus at the end say i am god's son he had to actually say i am god but he didn't say that because this is exactly what Jesus tells you time and time again throughout the Bible that my father is greater than I. I can of myself do nothing. He says many things like that. Can you imagine John 5.30? God telling people that he can himself do nothing. This does not sound like God. This sounds like a servant of God. Jesus clarifies to you that these disciples even were given to him by whom? By God. By his father. Yes, the technicality here of the term father is not used in the Quran because the Quran in Arabic is very clear. The term Allah is used. You cannot use the term Allah for anyone, any false God. And that is the reason the term Allah is used in the Quran. However, the term Elohim can be used for false gods, can be used for non-gods like Moses, like the example he gave, can be used for angels. So you see the Quran is very specific in the terms it uses, like the term Allah is only used for Almighty God. Similarly, Jesus himself never ever claims to be Almighty God, as we have seen Exodus 3.14. Yes, the true God will say the one being. Yes, which we know in John 8.58, he did not say. But anyway, we have moved on from that. We have gone to John 5.30. Sorry, we have gone to um, John 10.30. He's saying the, uh, the Jews picked up stones again. So what? The Jews have always wanted to kill him. They always wanted to say that he's blaspheming. In fact, tells, they tell him that you are a Samaritan. You have a possessed. Do we believe that? No, we don't. So let's keep things in perspective. The, uh, the question here is, is Jesus God Almighty according to his own statement? 
so far I've not seen any statement. Oh yeah, he did mention about, um, in, in the beginning he said that um, uh, the Alpha and Omega. Yes, in that case you should worship uh, Melchizedek because he says there's no genealogy. Yes, no beginning of days, okay. no end of time. You, you took quite a while, I think you should have You're, you're doing that for yeah, a yeah, yes. I, I said, I said no, this. No, but I, was, I, I didn't tell him to finish. Oh, I, I let him finish, I let him finish. But he's doing it to me now. So let's be fair. What I'm saying is that just because Melchizedek did not have the beginning of days or end of time, are you going to worship him as God and are you going to be consistent for the Alpha and Omega statement? So show me once again a statement from Jesus Christ, clear cut, unambiguous, that is claiming to be Almighty God okay. from the Bible. Okay, now Hashem brought up, um, I don't know if he knows where this is found about Melchizedek, it's found in Hebrews chapter 7, okay? Okay, so where is, okay, where is, where is, uh, Melchizedek, time, where is Melchizedek mentioned in the Old Testament? Tell me. It's, it's he doesn't, time, he doesn't even time. know. Melchizedek, is, Melch know. then tell me, where is he found? Just read it. Okay, Melchizedek time. is found in uh, Genesis chapter 14, okay? Now, Melchizedek is not a theophany as some people believe. Some people believe Melchizedek was a theophany, a vision of God in the Old Testament. That's, that's not the case. Melchizedek was a real person. In uh, Genesis chapter 14, he is called the King of Salem, okay? Which is shortened for Jerusalem, okay? Now, in the Old Testament, uh, Melchizedek kind of comes along, we see he's got a priesthood and he disappears. And when uh, Hebrews mentions he has no mother, no father, that's not mentioning the fact that Melchizedek is God, because it doesn't say he's, he is like Jesus. He says he's un, his ministry is like the, the ministry of Christ. It's un, unto like the Son of Man. And how, what does that mean? Because his ministry, his priesthood, the Christians believe has no ending, Christ's priesthood as our, as our eternal high priest uh, before the Father mediating on our behalf never ends that's the comparison that's being made the priesthood not the divinity of melchizedek because he's not because the book of hebrews is all about the deity of christ the book of hebrews begins in verse uh, chapter 1 verse 3 by saying that jesus is the exact imprint of the nature of god so why would hebrews begin by saying jesus is of the same nature of god and then forget about that and say melchizedek is god it makes no sense now he did bring up uh, john chapter 5 verse 30. now i'll read it to you because hashim did quote it correctly so thank you for that I can do nothing of myself. That, that, that's what it says. It says, I can do nothing of myself. But why did Jesus say those words? We have to go back to verse uh, 17 to understand why he can do nothing of himself. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father. Now notice earlier, Hashim said he wasn't trying to call himself the son of God. That's not what Jesus meant to say. Well, here we have it. Because you call, your, because you call God your father. Making himself equal with God. So Christ, time and time again, made himself equal with God. Hashim says that never happens. The text says otherwise. But if we continue to read in, uh, in verse 19, then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. There's that language again. But what he sees the father do, for whatever he does, the son does also in like manner. So whatever the father does, the son also does. So the fact that Jesus says, I can do nothing of myself, is perfectly suitable, considering that if he is joint nature with God by virtue of the divinity that they share, he's not going to become a rogue deity and go off and do his own thing. He is going to do everything in perfect accordance with his father. Perfect. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, that they may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Now can a mere prophet raise the dead and give them life? Absolutely, positively not. Okay, let's continue. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all should honour the Son as they honour the Father. Now how do we honour the Father? We honour the Father through our worship. So how should we honour the Son? through our worship. Now Hashim uses verse arbitrarily, and we have to notice this, his methodology is ultimately arbitrary. When you pick a verse here, pick a verse there, ignore the verses before, and ignore the verses after, okay? That's why his method fails, because it's arbitrary. Because if we take the reasons why Jesus can't do things of his own, as it says here in these previous verses, we understand why Jesus said these words. It's not because of what Hashim said. Now I want to ask you, can you believe that Jesus Christ said these words, that Jesus Christ will raise the dead? Can you believe those words? Can you believe the fact that Jesus Christ said, um, all judgment has been given to the Son. Can you believe the words of Christ when he said, if you honor, the way you honor the Father is the same way you should honor the Son? Now, if you believe what Christ said in verse 30, why do you not believe what he said in the verse where he says, if you honor the Father in that way, honor me the same way? Okay, so... Lots of uh, passages there once again. So that's, that's fine. Is it okay if you stand a bit far? Please, I keep repeating this. So what I'm saying is that if God, if Jesus is only doing what he sees the Father do, what does that mean? That means he has 
He's contingent on the Father. Can God be contingent on anyone? He's independent of everyone. The fact that Jesus is saying that he, sorry, he, he mentioned something about raising the dead. So what? Jesus was given the ability to raise from the dead or raise uh, or do miracles, as he says in Acts 2.22. Yes, he is a man accredited by God to do wonders and miracles amongst us through, sorry, through Jesus, uh, God does it. Through him, means through Jesus Christ. All right, so what it means is that Jesus has been given this ability by his God. Yes, very clear. And by the way, raising people from the dead is not something unique only to Jesus. We know that uh, in the Bible, Elisha does that. Yes, in fact, it goes on to say that in this, um, there's a passage in the Bible, in 2 Kings chapter 13, one, uh, verse number 21, where it says, Once while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders. So they threw the man's body in Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, remember this, the dead man's bones, Elisha's bones, a prophet's bones actually, yes? Mm -hmm. The man came to life and stood up on his feet. My God, if the bones can have miracles, a dead man's bones can bring people to life, then why are you so, uh, I don't know, um, why are you giving such importance to Jesus, raising people back from uh, dead to life? If a <clears throat> dead man's bones can do that, then why can't Jesus do it? Okay. So again, once again, you haven't shown anything from Jesus where he claims to be God. Remember, that is a topic. Okay, now, as I've just said, in uh, Hashim's pointing out that uh, there were prophets who also rose the dead. Yes, there were. There, uh, Paul raises a dead man. When Paul is preaching and a man falls asleep on a windowsill, falls to his death, Paul raises him up. Does that make him God? No, it doesn't. But this passage, which Hashim actually ignored the context, is talking about the resurrection on the last day. Now, Hashim cannot believe that Christ is going to resurrect the dead on the last day. Yes, prophets, by the power of God, can resurrect, uh, can raise up dead people. They can resuscitate them, absolutely. But this is talking about the resurrection on the last day. He's made a category error. He's saying that they can raise the dead, Jesus can raise the dead. Let's put these in the same category. That's not in the same category. The category where Christ raises the dead is on the last day. Hashim can't believe that, but yet he uses a few verses after that to prove a point. Now let's go back to chapter 5. I want you to answer these questions. But also said that God was his father, making himself equal. You ignore that part, sorry. You ignore that part. So why do you ignore that part and only arbitrarily pick the verses you want? So back to my original point. This is about talking, resurrecting the dead on the last day, not a miracle performed by prophets. I grant you that. Prophets can do that. But this is talking about resurrection on the last day. Which okay. One? The two kings? No, no. Chapter 5. Did I mention the keep, two kings? Yes, keep up. I'm got, are you not listening? I'm granting you, Hashim, prophets can raise the dead by the oh, power finally. of God. I'm granting okay. you that, but I'm saying you're making a category. Because you actually said they couldn't do that. No, 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 I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. No, 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 no. On the last day, they cannot do that. That's only, that's only something that God can do. So, okay. let me, so let me speak. You're making a category error where you're saying that uh, prophets raise the dead. There have been the bones there and kings. You're absolutely right. That says that. Prophets have raised the dead by the power of God. The apostles did it in the, in the uh, book of Acts, okay? Absolutely, but that's, not Wait, you, but, that's not, but that's not resurrecting the dead on the last day. Pick up that point. Can Jesus, being a prophet, resurrect the dead on the last day? And can Jesus, calling God his Father, make himself equal with God, according to you? Bear in mind, you quoted a few verses after that, but you arbitrarily ignore the, the passages that come before. Okay, so anyway, we know that there are prophets and even dead bones that can raise people back to life. So that's not a big miracle which only Jesus did, others did it. The resurrection, right. pick on that. It's Don't ignore turn. what I said. So what I'm saying is that he earlier said that it's only, the uh, it's only Jesus who will judge on the day of judgment. Yes, however, the Bible says otherwise. Is yeah. it in Matthew chapter 19, verse 28? This is, remember, this is after resurrection. This is after resurrection when people will be judged. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, at the renew renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on, the, on his glorious throne, you, who have followed me will also sit on the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now you tell me, can ordinary people who are not even prophets, yes, have the honor of judging on the day of judgment? According to him, it wasn't. It was only the Jesus who was given this power, not even the Father. However, we have passages in the Bible which completely contradicts what Ben is trying to posit. Now let's, let, let's read where the Father actually judges. It says in John 8, 50, it says here, I am not seeking glory for myself. Jesus is saying this, yeah? I'm not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. And now, where does he say that he'll judge on the day of judgment? Here it is. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1.17. So you see, 
the disciples judge jesus judges the father judges how many gods have we got now who has got all this honor of judging important the day of judgment is quite an important day where everyone will be judged but here who is judging the mortals are judging and god almighty is judging as well and then jesus is judging as well Finish? Yeah, okay, fantastic. Now notice he didn't actually address my point, he just ran on to his next point. Unfortunately, we seem to, we seem to be playing whack-a-mole. He brings up one argument, we knock it down, he runs to another one. This is not consistent, stick with the top, stick with the particular passage we're referring to. Don't run here, here, there and everywhere, because you can't answer the point. I asked you specifically, answer, why did Jesus call in God, make, him, uh, make himself equal with God? Why do you ignore that part, but arbitrarily go to the part that you think fits with Islamic theology? And yes, the 12 disciples are given judgment. Now notice, who gives them that judgment? Jesus says you, you, you will be able to judge the 12 tribes of Israel because there were 12 apostles, yes? So they judged 12 tribes of Israel. It doesn't say they, they judged the general dead on the, on the last day. It doesn't say that. Jesus gave them this judgment. So how can a mere, and bear in mind, if he's just a prophet, how can a prophet give people the ability to judge on the last day? Of course, that's only something God can do himself. Therefore, Christ is God. So his arguments don't actually disprove the deity of Christ. They point to the deity of Christ. But again, go back to John chapter five, why do you ignore the parts that clearly point to the deity of Christ? Okay, so he's saying that I actually ran away from the points. You did. You know, you are the one who brought in a lot of points when I was dis discussing Exodus 3.14. Yes, does that mean you ran away from that point? You no, didn't address because my point. you couldn't respond to the how on, so you went to another point. And that's what he's running, he's running to another point. Dan, stop interrupting. You said we were done with that point. No, now you're bringing it back up. Stop interrupting. I didn't interrupt you. Even though you were actually making a lot of uh, low blows there, I didn't interrupt you. If that is the way you want to debate, then I, th I think you should probably try somewhere else. What I'm saying is that when it says in John, sorry, in Matthew 19, 28, it says, Jesus said to them, yes, truly I tell you at the renewal of all things, when the son of man sits on the glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on the 12 thrones. Yes, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. First and foremost, it doesn't say Jesus gave them the judgment, which he actually tried to imply. It doesn't say that in that passage. Secondly, what will they be judging them on the day of judgment about? Yes, why would these mortals who are the disciples be judging the 12 tribes of israel which is actually all the jews so all the jews will be judged by these apostles and it doesn't say in that passage which he tried to wrongfully imply that this was given by as some sort of a judgment to them in fact jesus was given the abilities by his god yes which you do not imply uh, which you haven't addressed yet why did jesus was he given the disciples by god he was given the abilities by God, like, like it says in Acts 2.22, which you have an address. It says nowhere in the Bible where Jesus names clearly, categorically, that he is Almighty God. He is always praying to God. Imagine this. Can, does a God pray to another God? If he's Almighty God, whom is he praying to? Yes? Let's see if he can address those points that I've raised. Okay. Now notice again, he jumped over the passage I brought, I brought up. I asked him specifically in John chapter 5, when it says Jesus calling God his own father, makes himself equal with God. For the third time, Hashim answered that point. Stop running here, there and everywhere. Stop doing the Hashim shuffle. Oh, and actually ask the point. Question, I'm about to, my friend. Yeah. So again, when he says it doesn't explicitly say Jesus gave them, it doesn't say Jesus gave them this authority, but it's Jesus is the one who's telling them, you will judge. So yes, it is Jesus saying, you will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. If, if who, what prophet can give people judgment on the last day? Here's a, here's a point. Well, he's not answering the point. No, 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 I'm telling, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If, if Jesus is saying, if Jesus is saying that these 12 disciples are going to be the ones that will judge the 12 tribes of Israel, it doesn't mean the general resurrection of the dead. It says nowhere like that, Hashim. If they're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel, listen, okay, okay. Who can give that authority but God alone? Can a prophet, can a prophet, could Muhammad say, you guys are going to judge, uh, judge certain people on the last day? Absolutely not. But again, I want you to, I want you, Hashim, to go back to John chapter 5 and address the point where God, Jesus calling God makes himself equal with God. Okay. Why do you ignore that? So I'm not ignoring that. In you have. Fact, in fact, you actually, you brought in the same. He made a correction that it wasn't Jesus who gave them the authority. I didn't and say then, that. Let me finish. No, you're lying. I didn't say that. Well, they will see it on camera if I'm lying. I did not say okay, that. So stop okay, interrupting me. Don't put words Remember in my mouth. Remember who's interrupting now. Don't put words Remember in my mouth. Remember who's interrupting. Okay, not me, him. So what, what it says over there, clearly Jesus did not give them the authority, which he tried to imply. Jesus, no way over here in this passage does it say that Jesus gave them the authority. Jesus informed them. Yes, he says truly, if, sorry, he says here, truly I tell you. Yes, at the renewal oh, of all you. things. I tell you, not I order you. There's a big difference. So if, imagine this. If somebody tells me that the weather is going to be great today, does it mean that he has the weather great? No. It just means he's informing me of the weather. That's all. I, I think you should take some English classes in order to find out the meaning of this. Because this is so this clear, yeah? That you cannot fault it. Now, 
when he says that Jesus made himself equal to God, how is he making equal to God when Jesus prays on his face? Yes, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he begs his God to take the cup away from him. Yes, let it be your will be done, not my will. Remember this, Jesus, according to that belief, is one person. Why is he saying that his will is different to that of the Father? Unless they are two different individuals, two different entities. And if they are two different entities, then how are they one if they have the same will? Unless they have diff different wills, that's the reason Jesus says, let it be uh, done with your will, thy will, not my will. What is this? Take the cup away from him. When the time came for his crucifixion, he's praying to his God. In fact, he's begging his God. He's pleading with his God. How? He puts his face on the floor. Yes? And he prays to God to take the cup away. What is the cup? The cup here is a cup of, uh, of crucifixion. He's telling the God, his God, that if there's another way, show him. Yes? But let it, let it, the end result should be the will of Father, his God, not the will of Jesus Christ. So if they are the same being, tell me why do they have same uh, different wills? Okay, Hashim made a Christological error. He said that Jesus Christ is two persons. That's what you said, yes? No, I didn't say that. What did he say? Watch the camera. Okay. I believe. Okay. Wait, 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 okay. So why does Jesus Christ? Yeah, he said two different entities. It's a question. The, 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 Remember, the, the Christian belief. The Christian belief is this: as that there is one being shared by three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I showed you earlier, Hashim, that Jesus shares nature with God, according to Hebrews chapter one, verse three. It says he is the exact imprint of the nature of God. Now, a prophet can't share nature with God. So what's all that about? You'd have to answer that. You, you ignored that actually earlier. Two wills. Like, no, one, one second. Two, two, okay, I will explain two wills. The early church. Uh, in, in, in his councils they had whatnot, you can read the early church, he said that the will is something of nature, not of person, okay? So Christ having two natures, the hypostatic union says that um, in Philippians chapter 2, for example, it says he entered human flesh, okay? So when Jesus, and then let's bear this in mind, there's not two persons in Christ, that's Nestorianism. Uh, Saint, Saint Cyril wrote 12 anathemas against this, uh, blasting Nestorianism. Because what, can I explain this Nestorianism? Explain quickly? the two. Okay, so, okay, so Nestorianism, this heresy, it's basically... No, no, no need to explain the Nestorianism. Explain the two uh, wills. I'll, I'll explain how I want. Okay, so the two wills is this. Ultimately, if Jesus is one divine son, there is no human person in Christ. Saint Cyril says this, okay? There's no human person in Christ. There is a human nature, okay? So Jesus Christ is one divine person who took on human flesh. He took on a human nature. So taking on a human nature, of course, takes on a human will. But in the garden, as he said, you see these two wills. He submits his human will to the divine will that he shares with his father. Now, why does Jesus pray? Why does Jesus pray, okay? Jesus prays because being of the same essence of God, when he comes down from uh, heaven enters human flesh, he's not going to become an atheist. He's going to continue that relationship with his father through earthly means, which is through prayer and worship. So and now I notice that prayer you mentioned, Hashim, yeah. which somehow disproves Jesus uh, being, being uh, the son. In that prayer, he actually calls God his father. You can't believe he even said that, Hashim. So you're quoting passages of Christ. You cannot believe he even said. So your arguments are self-refuting. You're quite the Christian apologist, actually, Hashim. But anyway, I want to draw you back to chapter five. You ignore the passage no, again. I yes, I you did. Yeah. No, no, you, no, no, no. You just saying. You're no, no, one second. You, you just briefly mentioning one? John chapter five. Wait, wait, one second. Wait, wait, you, wait. you just mentioned. You again, one second. Man. You just briefly meant. You just briefly mentioning Hashim. You just saying John chapter five. Then running to three different verses doesn't do anything. No, the same, address the, the passage. Same argument. I can go to any argument. verse I want. I can uh, answer the way I want. Uh, address okay, so you're saying Jesus actually has two wills. That's what he said. He said he shares one will with the Father, and he's got a human will. Does that mean he has two wills? Yes. Yes? Two wills, yes. That's a, that's a, that's a no, heresy. No, no, it's not. What heresy is <laughs> okay. that? What heresy is that? Go and look it up. What heresy? Go and look it can up. You tell it? Can, can you say it? I will. I will. No, it's it's by time. It's, it's by time. not a heresy. Stop it's not a heresy. Okay, so it entails two people. When you have two wills no. in one person, it entails two persons. No, it doesn't. This is what I was trying to gauge from him, and I knew he would fall for that. No, that is the reason no, I said. So let's. You know now this is the crux of the matter. He'll think I, I'm running away, but I'm making. He doesn't realize that I'm actually picking pixel, pixel, pixel to draw a picture for him. I hope he gets the full picture when we are finished with this. I mean, so you're saying on the cross, yes, because Jesus is only one person. Remember this. This were his words. Yes, on the cross from the three persons of the Trinity who died. Sorry, repeat from that. On the three persons of the Trinity, which person died the on the cross? The son. The can I address the, your point? The total? second person? Yes, can I address no, no, is that the second one, person? The son, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's my turn yes, still. The son, yes. So he's saying the son, the son died. Now remember flesh. this, the second person, the second person of the Trinity. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's yeah, about, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah, whether it's God. Yes, I'll tell I, you I, how I, it is. I can, I can, now I can he's answer, interrupting. Now the cameraman is interrupting. I can answer it. So JC is interrupting. None of our cameramen are interrupting. So now, it's not my cameraman. Okay, so what I'm saying is this. If Jesus... If Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, and he said the Son, the Son died, the second person of the Trinity died, what does that mean? That means he is not immortal. Let me answer. Yes, 
Yes, of course, you'll answer in your turn. Now it's my turn. Okay. So, JC was trying to say, and there's nothing to do with the topic. Yes, it is. Because we're trying to prove whether Jesus is God or not. Remember this. God does not die. First Timothy 6.16. He alone is immortal. Yes, who lives in unapproachable life. No man has seen or can see. No, I will answer you. You'll have to wait your turn. Now, what I'm saying is that if Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, and the second person of the Trinity died, remember this question earlier. Okay, let me speak now. No, no, no. You're going no, on too no, long. No, no, I'm, I'm answering. Okay, so don't interrupt me. What I'm saying is that if Jesus is the same in nature as that of God Almighty, God Almighty never dies. He's always immortal, but Jesus died because he says there's only one person and that one person is the second person of the Trinity okay. who died on the cross. Okay, fantastic. Now Hashim once again is showing that he's a poor Christological student. He doesn't understand the early Christological heresies that the early church dealt with. Ultimately, he might not realize, or you guys might not realize it, but he's just accused me of the heresy of Nestorianism. Okay? I did. I did. No, okay, without even realizing he's done that, so he doesn't okay. even realize it, okay? Now he's saying that to say the son died on the cross is a heresy, yes? No. I see. That makes him that, okay. The two wheels. That okay. Shows not okay, 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 okay. That's that's it. Okay. So, the, so the two so the two wheels. Okay, the two wheels was argued about with Nestorius and Saint Cyril. Okay, Nestorius ultimately denied the term Theotokos. The, the word Theotokos in, in, in to do with Mary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is what gets. So he doesn't even realise this is the argument it comes from. So the argument it comes from is this: Nestorius and Saint Cyril. Nestorius said that Christ is not Theotokos, he's only Christotokos. Theotokos means that uh, Mary was the bearer of God, she bore God in her womb, okay? Christotokos, which is what the story is taught, he said that she only bore the Christ in her womb. So, 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 ultimately, so ultimately, he turned Christ into two persons, okay? And these two persons had a will each, there was two wills within the two persons. The, the hypostatic union is not that doctrine. Saint Cyril said, and ultimately, if he's going to accuse me of this heresy, he has to accuse Saint Cyril of the same heresy. And even, though, and, even though, and even though Saint Cyril, Saint Cyril was the one who fought against the heresy he's accusing me of. And Saint Cyril says the same thing as me. Saint Cyril says in his 12 anathemas against Nestorianism, he says, if you do not believe that Jesus Christ, God, suffered in the human flesh, you are anathema in the Greek, which means cut off, accursed, you're, not, you're no longer in the faith, okay? Now he said, um, "What say? It, oh, he, he's immortal. Okay, immortal. he's immortal." He used Second One Timothy chapter six, verse uh, sixteen, to say that, he's, that only God is immortal. Let's read this uh, intelligently and let's see the context. Okay, let's start in verse fourteen. That you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which He will manifest in His own time. He who is the blessed and only potent, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who alone has immortality. Now. This, this, this one who has immortality is called Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Now, if you understand Trinitarian theology, this makes perfect sense when given the context. The, the, but bear in mind, the one who is immortal is Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Is immortal. In, yeah, is immortal. immortal, yes. Oh, but but right. then, Hashim, stop interrupting. Oh, look, so, I'm so, stop, so the, one, the one who is immortal is the Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Now, if you continue reading the Bible, you will find out who this Lord of Lord and King of Kings is. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, Jesus Christ is called the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Revelation, one second. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, Jesus Christ is called the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So if, according to Hashim, the one who is immortal is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, by Hashim's own logic, Jesus Christ is therefore immortal when you take into the Trinitarian perspective by virtue of the divine nature. Yes, the human nature died on the cross. We well, believe that. Saint, that. Saint Cyril says this, and if you want to accuse, if you want to accuse me of this heresy, Heresy, you have to accuse the man who fought against the heresy of committing the same heresy, which is retarded. So, is he immortal or not? Is the end of existence. Is he immortal no. or not? You haven't answered that key yes. question. Okay, is death, is, is death the end of existence? Answer. Okay, first and foremost, no, 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 remember no, no, no. this. No, no, no. JC, why don't you just shut up and let us talk? Okay, don't be rude. So, Come on. I will, well, he's don't interrupting, that's rude. rude. Your guys are interrupting. No, they're not my guys. This is your guys. You, 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 you said nothing. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the question was the second person of the Trinity died. Did the first person die? No. Did ah. the second person die? Sorry, yes. Did the third person die? No. That means they are not the same co-equal in nature. One is immortal. Sorry, the two are immortal, the Father and the Holy Spirit. However, the Son, the second person of the Trinity, did not die. Do you remember how he tried to actually, uh, uh, I don't know, shove that under the carpet? He's saying the nature died, the human nature died. Remember my question? Which person died? Yes? So now who's making the wrong in, uh, interpretation over here. The interpretation is not which nature died because we are not talking about the nature of Jesus. We know he has two natures according to Christology. However, my question was, did he die? And he said died. That makes him mortal, not immortal. Okay. Okay. I haven't finished yet. Uh, 
Please hurry up. Now, well, stop doing ah, that, dude. okay? When your turn was there, I didn't push you like that. So, now he hasn't answered that question. He's run off to the nature of Jesus Christ. We didn't ask about the nature of Jesus Christ. We know that. So, please stop answering questions which you did not ask. Do answer the ones that I did ask you. Is God immortal or mortal? God is always immortal, yes? Whether he's called the King of Kings or whatever the title is. If this God is Almighty God, then he will forever be immortal. We all are mortal. He is mortal. I am mortal. All of the people watching are mortal. The only one who is immortal according to 1 Timothy 6, it says that he alone is immortal. The term alone is exclusive only to Almighty God in that context. And the term immortal means never dying. It doesn't mean not cease to exist. So that's the answer to you. That doesn't mean cease to exist. That means separation of the soul from the body. Did that happen to Jesus? Yes. Which soul separated? How many souls does he have? You already said he had two wills. How many souls does he have? Go on. Okay. So I do. That's okay. You. Okay. So Hashim's actually once again, without even realizing, he spoke about another Christological heresy. He's made a blatant error. He says, if the son dies, does that mean the father dies? No, it doesn't. Now what he just said. What he just said is a category error. Okay. Because you no, you said you said if the father dies, does that mean the if the son dies, does that mean the father dies and the Holy Spirit dies? That's no, a lie. no. Yes, you did. Did he say that? Anyway, anyway, yeah, let me yeah. we're doing we're going to do a flashback in this video. You you're going to look flashback. very no silly. Problem. Okay, I'm sure okay, you're okay, okay. Now. okay. That's fine. So, okay, <laughs> the heresy he's just brought up is called Patripassianism. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. Okay, carry on. tell me what that is. No, no, carry on. Can't tell. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He acts as if he does, but he doesn't. Is he mortal? Mortal. is the heresy. Ultimately, comes from Sabellian. Sabellianism. Yeah. Sabellianism is the heresy of modalism, that the God is one person, one being, therefore when Christ died on a cross, as Hashim said, does that mean the Father died? Tertullian said Sabellianism is Patripassianism. Patripassianism is the heresy, as he's just said, of, 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 of the Father dying. Of teaching. I'm immortal. trying to teach you, Hashim. Patripassianism is the heresy, is the heresy that the Father suffered death. Christians have never believed that. that. Saint Cyril in his 12 anathema said, if you do not believe the Son of God died in human flesh, you're anathema. I encourage you, Hashim, read church history. This will clear up this entire argument. Do we believe Jesus is immortal by virtue of the divine nature? Yes, he's immortal. When yes. He, when, yes, when he, when, See, Hashim says these things that, Christ, that the Christians have always believed for the centuries as if he's made a killer point, as if we've never thought about this. Oh, so you always thought he was more... <laughs> Come back to he, he makes his point. Have you finish your no, education in heresies? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. You, haven't okay. you need an education so in heresies you because you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. No, one, no, no. I didn't say he wasn't immortal. Now he's putting words into my mouth again. I said, I said, I said, by, I said by the virtue of the divine nature he shares with the Father, he's immortal. When he took on human flesh, he died in the human flesh. That's what Christians have always. That's what that, the second person of the Godhead. Now, was he immortal? What? Sorry. Was he immortal? By virtue of the divine nature, he's immortal. So he didn't die then. Yes, he did die in human flesh. Uh, have you ignored everything I've just said? Person, Saint, I didn't ask Saint, you what nature he Saint Cyril, the second person of the Godhead, died in human flesh. Saint, 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 Cyril, Saint Cyril, Saint Cyril says this in his, 12, in his 12 anathemas. This has been taught throughout Christian history. Hashim needs to keep up. That's why you're believing in three gods then, maybe. So what he's saying is that because of, by virtue of the uh, essence of God Almighty, who is always immortal, Jesus is immortal. How is that? When he clearly stays the second person of the Trinity died. The fact that he died shows that he is not immortal. What does the, maybe you should go and define what the term immortal is in this context. In this context, if no one died from the Trinity, which again, he, he wants to eat his cake as well. He wants to have his cake and eat it at the same time. So he wants on one side to say that God, Jesus is immortal, but then he also wants to claim that he died on the cross for to redeem his sins. Otherwise, his sins wouldn't be redeemed. JC and Ben will be forever eternally sinners. And not be forgiven they will never enter heaven because the only way that sins can be forgiven is by the human sacrifice yes i say human sacrifice because until you tell me that god died on the cross and if that is what you're saying then you already finished the debate no the fact that jesus claims that sorry uh, you claim that jesus died the second person of the Trinity died that itself shows that he is not immortal by the definition of immortal which means the one who does not die go and look up the word athanasia okay it means someone who does not die Someone who is not subject to death in the context of 1 Timothy 6 16, that's why it says immortal, the alone is immortal. Remember this when you die, your soul lives on, yes, which means your soul becomes immortal. This is after your death, so you do die, and then your soul becomes immortal, eternal bliss or eternal damnation, depending on the judgment of God Almighty. Yes, however, I'm not saying when you die, you cease to exist. What I'm saying is that the fact that the soul separated 
from the body of Jesus Christ is a proof that is he died like he says in Romans 10 9 yes that who raised Jesus back to life it was God who raised him back to life imagine this God Almighty raising another God of theirs Jesus Christ back to life can you imagine this the resurrection Jesus might have said that I lay down my life and I lifted it up again that means he never died if he's going to lift his life again either that is true or the father resurrected him which one is it because the Bible is full of contradictions whether you bring Saint Cyril or you bring some Chalcedonian creed or whatever creed you want at the end of the day there are a lot of holes in your narrative and this is very clear that you cannot have played both ways either Jesus is immortal or Jesus died on the cross you cannot have it both ways if he died then certainly he cannot be God because God is always immortal okay anyway so once again notice Hashim's run from every point I've ever mentioned John chapter 5 still hasn't been answered he mentions Done. you know he mentions uh, Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 first and Timothy. first yet yeah, it doesn't matter Timothy you can say Timothy so first Timothy chapter 6 verse uh, 16 616 6, 16. that's what I said 616 why are you just repeating what I'm well, saying as if you're just... as if you're making a point Hashim I'm correcting your references I said 616. so anyway first yeah. Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 as he said he goes back to this again saying this is the immortal one the immortal one is called Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Jesus is called Lord of Lord, King of Kings. It, it absolutely matters because, Jesus, because once again, Hashim is pointing out a divine title of God that is referred to uh, to Jesus Christ. Therefore, it's a divine claim. Thank you, Hashim. You are, you, are quite the, you are quite the Christian apologist. Now, also, we see Jesus did claim to be uh, eternal when he says in Revelation 1.17, I am the first and I am the last. What, what prophet can claim to be the first and the last? No. Melchizedek, no, absolute nonsense. We've, we've addressed that. No, he doesn't haven't. know what he's talking you about. Haven't. He doesn't. He's you talking. Out, I asked him where was Melchizedek found in the Old Testament. Couldn't, couldn't, have to couldn't, say couldn't it. tell me. Couldn't yeah. tell me because yeah. he's, he's found a verse here online yes. somewhere. They, they think suits his point no, from uh, Ahmadidat.com. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Yes, still okay. Really okay. on that, you know. Ahmadidat blew it's my turn. It's my such turn. a blow Hashim. to them that these guys cannot forget Hash him. Ahmadidat was nothing but showman. Do you know what? Hashim, Hashim is actually a better debater than Ahmadidat. I'll give you that. Ahmadidat was a oh, showman and, 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 and nothing more. Ah, okay. okay. That, 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 that might that be why you're making the same mistakes. That okay. explains why okay. I'm doing no, this. No, you guys. No, he, oh, no, he said, no, he said that... Uh, Come on, is he mortal or immortal? He said, he said that God, he said, he said that God raises up the body of Christ. Yeah, well, let's listen to what Christ actually said. In verse 19 of John chapter 2, Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and I will raise it up on the last day. Yeah. And then, it then goes on to say, what do you mean he didn't die? He and, then, it, then, and, then, and then goes on to say that he was talking about the temple of his body. So you said God raises up Jesus. Jesus says, I raise up my own body. By your own logic, Jesus is God. Again, oh, you are quite a, the Christian apologist. Actually. You, actually. You, quite, you didn't realize that. You are quite the Christian apologist. Yes, I am. Dealing with you guys, I've become quite an apologist that you guys cannot answer simple questions. Remember, he ran away Have from I answered mortal points? and immortal. He ran Have away from it. He did not answer that no, because he knew that is a no, dead blow. No, from the time of Sheikh Ahmed Didad, these guys had not not responded to the point because you see if God Almighty has certain attributes which only are attributed to God Almighty nobody else for example the fact that he, ne he never dies that he's immortal the second attribute is his omniscience that means he is all-knowing when Jesus was on earth yes he was one person remember not two persons one person so this one person did not know the last hour however what does he say Nobody knows the hour, not the angels in heaven, not the son except the father in heaven. So he's making a clear distinction in the knowledge that he has about the last hour and the knowledge that only the father has. Remember only the father, again, one person who is this thing. Last statement, this thing? Yeah, sure, no problem. Last statement. You started it, so I'll have the last word. Well, I'm so, gonna finish. I'll give a wrap up after that. Yeah, you can give a wrap up, but then afterwards I have still one more to do. That's so fine. what I'm saying is that Jesus is immort not immortal, he is not omniscient because he doesn't know the last hour. In Mark 13, 32, he clearly says that he doesn't know the hour, only the Father knows. So again, this is a clear testimony from Jesus Christ himself. Remember the argument of this entire debate is whereas Jesus claimed to be God. So I've shown you from Jesus' own testimony that he doesn't know the last hour, that he himself is the one who was Actually, actually, according to their own uh, belief, that Jesus died on the cross, the second person of the Trinity died on the cross, which makes him disqualified from being immortal. Now, you can carry on, but you still have an answer about the immortal, so I, I was hoping you would do that. Okay, this is going to be my, that was Hashim's last no statement. Well. This, this is going to be my closing statement, okay. No I've answered Hashim, for, um, best bear this in mind, Hashim has not answered John chapter 5. 
Okay, he's totally ignored what I said, where it says that Jesus explicitly made himself equal with God. What does Hashim do? He runs to Melchizedek. Okay, <laughs> anyway, let's continue. He, he also, I actually did answer that. I asked you where could you find Melchizedek in the Old Testament. You couldn't even tell me because you found a verse on Google that you think is going to be a shotgun blow and actually it's retarded. But let me continue. You read this passage that uh, he mentioned in Timothy 6.16. I've answered this explicitly already. That one who is called immortal is called Lord of Lords, King of Kings. We see Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So by that, by his own logic, Jesus therefore is this Lord of Lords of King of Kings who is immortal. So therefore he's God. So because, be the because only God is immortal. Now, in terms of the cross, do we believe, and Hashim thinks he's, he says these things as if he's found some great argument that Christians have never actually thought of. He says things that Christians believe as if he's making an argument. I agree, we believe what you've said, that the second person of the Trinity died on the cross. He died, he died in human flesh. Saint Cyril in his 12 anathemas, Saint Cyril in his 12 anathemas says, if you don't believe the Son of God died in human flesh, you're anathema, you're cut off from the faith. Now Hashim isn't aware that any of this is spoken about in church history because he just finds a verse here and there, thinks it suits his theology and runs with it. Now, he mentions, um, what was the last point you mentioned? How about his omniscience? Omniscience, okay, thank you. Now, okay, I'm going to give you the apostolic teaching on this, okay? The word know there, how is this word uh, know used in the Bible? When we see, no, it's not semantic, coming from the king of semantics. <laughs> anyway, as I'm saying, listen. This word no, in, uh, in, it's out, that, play, that passage is found in Mark and also in Matthew. Yeah. There are parallel verses, okay? You didn't know that okay, one. absolutely, I didn't know that one. Okay, these are, found, these are parallel verses, okay? So we see this. That, what does the early church teach about this? They, they, they use this, and uh, John, St. John Chrysostom says that this is not to be taken literally, this is to be taken figuratively. As in the Old Testament, where it says, you can shake your head, Hashem, because you've never heard this argument. Anyway, is it past, past no, past no, past no, past one, one, one second, one second. St. John Chrysostom taught, as it says in the Old Testament, this word no is used in different ways. When it says, Adam knew his wife Eve, this is talking about the moment of consummation of the marriage when they had sex. Now, does it mean that he didn't know his wife before he had sex? Absolutely not. Now, the St. John Chrysostom teaches, and the Apostolic Church, church taught, that this is Jesus Christ said this in the same sense that that language is used. Does it mean the husband? So did he know one second. Does it mean does it mean the husband doesn't know his wife so before like before he has sex? He, he Hashim, stop interrupting. Okay. Does it mean that the wife, the husband does not know the wife before they have sex? No, of course not. It's it's a term used in, in Hebrew that is, that is quite often used. Now when he says um, he says that I do not know the hour, this is a figurative speech according to uh, Saint John Chrysostom, because if Jesus said this is going to be the last day, the disciples would not be focused. Jesus also said all the things that were going to happen before that day comes and he also said that day will come like a thief in the night so he didn't want to tell them the exact day although we do have christian heretics who say he's coming on this date they tried to set a date christ christ said not to do that now does christ know all things in the same gospel you continue reading at the end of john chapter 21 it says peter says to jesus we know that you do know all things so when you marry these up it makes perfect sense it's figurative not literal christ according to john chapter 21 knows all things and once again, I'd like to point out, Hashim's answered nothing I've said. He's just done the Hashim shuffle, so the gone from this point, this point. I appreciate it. Uh, no, we're not shaking hands in okay. the coronavirus thing. Okay, thank you. I'm hoping you wouldn't stand that close either, but you kept coming close, I don't know. <laughs> Why are you going away now? Hello. Oh, that, I said that was my last statement. No, but mine. You started, remember? Fair enough. You can't sit to the camera. Yeah. I know, you couldn't wait to run away, could you? <laughs> after yeah, that beating, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, after yeah, that beating, he wants to scram out of here. Because it's really... Okay. A... So the important <laughs> thing is this, remember, Answer the question what did he do? Instead of saying... Answering the question about the immortality, he runs to the title of Jesus, King of Kings. You know the Pharaohs, they had such titles like the King of Kings. Yes, Lord of this and Lord of that. Does that mean they are God according to his logic? They will be God. So do not run to the title of Jesus when my question was specifically about his nature, whether he was immortal or mortal. Anyway, he has said many times, the second person of Trinity died. Second person of Trinity died. Second person of Trinity died. That means he is not immortal. That itself will end the story here with these guys here who claim that Jesus is God Almighty because the Father never died. Yes, in any shape or form, he did not die. He is always immortal. That's why it says over there, he alone is immortal. And, and he did the same thing with regards to the omniscience of Jesus. So he's saying that is a metaphorical, uh, uh, sorry, According to the, church, the question yeah. was very specific. The question asked to Jesus is about the last hour. Now, why would Jesus deceive them if he knew the answer already? Either he knew it or he was telling a lie that he did not know because he specifically says who didn't know the hour. He also says the angels didn't know the hour. Is that metaphoric as well? Maybe they knew. Maybe the angels knew the hour. 
and Jesus is being metaphorical here. This is the logic of these Christians that we have to deal with in the park here. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh did that. Finished these guys a long time ago before Brother Hijab was here. So they were finished. They were finished. Hijab. They were finished. You say Hijab. Yes, Hijab. 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 What Hijab. 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 A uh, preacher ah, okay. in the park who actually gives them some sort of insecurity as well. So now what we are doing here is that we have Christians like him who actually lean on self-interpretation. So then I say Jesus of Mark 13, 32 and the passage in Matthew as well, that this is metaphorical. So maybe metaphorically the, uh, the angels knew, maybe the men knew as well because he says nobody knows the hour. Maybe the men knew as well. You're Maybe you know. Yourself. Yes. You're repeating yourself. Yes. What I'm saying is that Jesus did not know the hour because he says the sun does not know. Nobody knows the hour, not the angels in heaven, nor the sun. Who is the sun here? He's explicitly and exclusively stating that he didn't know the hour. And then he says at the end, and then he only the Father knows. Now, according to your Christology, the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. So we know for a fact that only the Father means exclusively this knowledge is only with the father not the son It's not metaphoric this is an explicit statement to an explicit question about the last hour so stop running around in circles yes you're making so many faults in your own uh, interpretations that you don't even realize now this is what we are dealing with today they will go and misinterpret remember that jesus rebuked the pharisees for this what did Jesus rebuke them? Because they were twisting the scriptures, which is exactly, we have Christians like this today, who twist the scripture. It says in the Quran, in chapter 279, that they actually, they actually make up the words and they attribute it to God. And then they say, these are the words of God. And this is what is happening. In the Quran, they've been rebuked. Jesus has rebuked them. What is Jesus saying, John 14, 24? That those who love me will keep my teachings. Yes, because he is clearly stating that his words are not his, but his words are that of his God, the one who sent him. Of his father, yes, he says. Yeah, that is his of God. His he says, I go to my father and my God. In, in John, words? stop Can interrupting, it's my turn. Words? I didn't interrupt you. You're John 20, John 20, 17, he says, remember this. He keeps saying the father. Yes, the father, according to Jesus, is his God. Because in John 20, 17, he says, I go to my father and your father, my God and your God. And on the Christ cross, when he was about to die, what did he say? My God, my God. He didn't say my father. My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Can you believe this? The Trinity is broken at that point because God Almighty abandoned the other God who according to him is also God Almighty. Now, this is a death knell to them from Jesus' own statement. And that's the reason you cannot prove from Jesus' statement that he's all God, God Almighty. And I think John 73 is the final nail in the coffin of this Christians and they should now know that they have been crucified totally based on this John 7 and 3 where Jesus testifies very clearly this is eternal life that they may know you here you is the father that they may know you the father the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you send the only true God is who the God of Jesus Christ the father with that, we finish this discussion. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, hi guys. Um, basically, what happened at the end of this debate, my audio for the uh, wrap up basically kind of cut out. So we had some trouble with the audio throughout this discussion. So I'll quickly do my wrap up here in regards to Hashim's last statement. Hashim said in regards to Mark 13, chap verse 32, uh, he said that I lean on my own self-interpretation. Now, that is, of course, a straw man, because if Hashim actually listened to what I said, he would have heard me say that this is the interpretation of many of the church fathers, such as St. John of Chrysostom. But why did some of the church fathers hold this view? It's because they r recognize the way in which the word no is used. The word no is used in different ways throughout the Bible. For example, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived. Now, does this mean that Adam only knew his wife once she conceived and had a baby? Of, of course not. That's a nonsense view to have. It's just a way in which language is used throughout the Bible. We also see this in Genesis chapter 22, verse 12, when Abraham was stopped from sacrificing his son. Now, it was then said to Abraham, now I know that you fear God. Now, does this mean that God didn't know this prior to this event? 
Of course not. And once again, it's just the way the language is used among the Jews uh, in the Old Testament times. We do also see that Christ does know all things. In John chapter 16, verse 30, it says, Now we can see that you know all things. Also, in John chapter 21, verse 17, Peter said, Lord, you know all things. So we can see that at times this is just the way language is used. St. John Chrysostom said that Christ uh, said it in this way simply because he didn't want the disciples to know when the day and the time was. And bear in mind, before Jesus said this, he had already given the disciples all the events that were going to take place before this happens. And he did say it will come like a thief in the night. Because if Jesus said to the disciples, it's going to happen here and it's going to happen then and at this time, then obviously the Christian followers would become lazy and we wouldn't focus on the mission ahead. Uh, also notice that Hashim constantly uses arguments that are self-refuting. He mentions verses where Jesus clearly refers to God as his father. Now, as a Muslim, Hashim cannot believe that Christ even said these words. So the arguments he makes actually contradict the Quran, which should be a problem for Hashim. Now, towards the end of his statement, Hashim mentions uh, John 17, 3. Now, let's bear in mind, he's using a gospel that is all about the deity of Christ. It has the highest Christology of all the gospels. But yet he seems to think he can use John 17, 3 out of context to prove that Jesus is not God. Now, let's bear in mind the two verses before this uh, disprove Hashim's argument because Jesus refers to God as his father and he refers to himself as God's son. Now, Hashim cannot believe Jesus said these words, but if we continue reading into verse five, Jesus says, now, father, glorify me with that glory that I had with you before the world began. Now, no mere prophet can share glory with the father before the world began. This is clearly a claim to pre-existence and a claim to deity, but Hashim arbitrarily picks a verse in the middle and hope it sticks with a Christian that doesn't know what he's talking about. He also mentioned time and time again, 1 Timothy 6, 16, as if I didn't respond. I absolutely responded. He said that this God in 1 Timothy 6, 16 is uh, the only immortal one. And I said, yes, it absolutely does say that. But that's not all it says. It also tells you who this immortal one is. And that immortal one is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Now, if you read in Revelation, we see in two separate chapters in the book of Revelation, Jesus is called by this title the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. So Jesus, according to Hashim, is the Lord of Lord, King of Kings. That Lord of Lord and King of Kings is immortal. There, there you go. Jesus is therefore immortal by virtue of the divine nature that he shares with his father. Hashim is quite the Christian apologist. But the now in the coffin for Hashim's question on the immortality of Christ is found in John chapter 1 verse 3. Because in John chapter 1 verse 3, it says that all things that were created were created by Jesus. So that must exclude Jesus from creation itself. Therefore, he's not creation, he's creator. Thank you very much, Hashim. God bless.